Hello and welcome back to the channel and thank you for joining me on another of my interviews. Now by popular demand, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we have brought back Sovereign Pete. You may remember um, about a month ago, maybe three weeks ago, something like that. Sovereign Pete came on the show. We were talking about what it is to be sovereign, of course, uh, to be um, the difference between lawful and what was legal. And we had a lot of uh, replies to the... Um, to the interview and lots of e emails. My email box was swamped. Uh, and of course, the comments were um, very full and overwhelming. And I know you had tons and tons of questions. However, we have Pete back again. Hello, Pete. Lovely to have you back on the show. Thank you very much. Nice to be back. Um, and yeah, back by popular demand, which is superb. I know there was a number of things that we mentioned in the previous interview that we didn't get round to, to doing. And one of those was uh, the birth certificate. But um, we just had a little talk before we started to record because you're the master of all of this so you. you know that the best way to unfold the information so that people can take it in in the in the right dollops if i can put it like that yeah sure no worries uh yeah i mean um i don't want to blow my own trumpet or anything but i've been researching this stuff like getting on for 30 years when the when the internet became available Mm. Um, and I never trusted what I was being told by mainstream, you know, in newspapers, on the TV and all of us. A lot of it didn't make sense. So I had to go off and research it. And then I discovered, obviously, the, the government's lying yet again. Um, and if I may, I'd like to just put a little shout out to one of the guests that you just had on, which was Dr. Natasha Campbell McBride. Ah, oh, yes. Um, Lovely lady. Absolutely brilliant. Um, her work is absolutely fantastic. I could... Anyone out there, if you've got gut problems, you've got any ill problem, anything like that, look into her work. She literally, I would say, saved my life. <laughs> really? So what, yes. what, t t tell us just a little bit about that before we go on with the uh, lawful legal stuff. Yes, I, I just want to get this story out there. A lot of people who know me close uh, know that I ended up in hospital um, several years ago and um, with very severe stomach pains, um, which I suffered from for about 20 years. Plus. Really? Yeah, and I always put it down to indigestion. I suffered from acid reflux, GERD, heart palpitations, whole load of nasty stuff like that. And every couple of weeks, I get these incredible stomach pains, doubled up, and it would last about two or three hours and pass. One night, it wouldn't go, um, and my partner, she panicked, and she says, right, I'm calling the ambulance, so I ended up in hospital. Long story short, they were going to do a whole load of... Um, Tests on me, chemo was talked about, all this, the, the C word, you know, oh, God. Yeah. So this is when I thought I'd better start researching health. And I started researching um, cancer and all this sort of stuff. Now, when I started doing my research online, um, what I would normally do is I'd listen to music in the background. So I'd be typing away, listen to the music. Back then, there was no such thing as YouTube. Hmm. But then as YouTube came along, um, I started listening to podcasts in the background and I'll be typing away and I'll be looking into stuff. And I was heavily researching um, uh, illnesses, all this germ theory, train theory. This is when I stumbled upon that. Um, and I stumbled uh, on um, the arm jab stuff. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I was listening to Dr. Campbell McBride and she was talking about health and gut health and all the rest of it. And I was sort of semi-listening and I'm typing away, I'm researching something else. And she said one line that absolutely threw it for me. She says, humans can't digest plant matter. And I went, excuse me, what? I didn't know that. And I thought, nah, she's wrong, she's wrong. Yeah. So then I, I stopped that line of research and I went off and I thought, okay, let me just research this stuff. And one of, what I did is I actually researched how digestive systems operated and worked, okay? So I went through all the different animals, um, ruminant, uh, cows got four stomachs, the difference between two types of digestive system, which is one is um, bacterial-based and another is an acid-based. And somewhere in the middle, you can have omnivores that have a, a combination of both, so bacterial and also acid-based. If you've got an acid-based digestive system, you are a carnivore, dogs, lions, tigers, that sort of stuff. If you're um, bacterial based, like a cow, then you eat your herbivore. If you're somewhere in, the, in between, you're an omnivore. Thing is, man, the species, we're not omnivores. We do not have the, the ability to actually digest plant matter. So Dr. Campbell McBride was completely correct on that. And that led me down a completely different route of researching. It took me over a year and I'm researching all this stuff. And, but long story short, 
I got rid of all my symptoms, all my gut pains, acid reflux, everything by changing my diet. Basically, the GAPS protocol, um, pure carnivore, no fruits, veggies, carbs at all. And I just did it. Bang. Yes, I suffered a little bit because you crave the carbs for about six to eight weeks. OK, you get past that. But there's I'm not giving up. I'm not going mm. back to those pains ever again. No. So, um, and I found not only did all my pains go away, all my symptoms go away and everything, but my brain started to work again. <laughs> I'll go into a room and I forget why I went into the room and I go, what yeah. are you for? And all that sort of stuff, you know. But then I found that I was more focused. My memory would return. My eyesight got better. I became stronger. I would heal faster. Uh, my skin got better, all this sort of stuff. And a lot of people say I've reversed the aging process. <laughs> so... But anyway, yes, well, I'm, mind, I'm, but, I, um, yeah, no, absolutely. That's a great endorsement. So uh, if you haven't seen the video, check it out. It's on the channel um, with uh, Natasha Campbell McBride. Uh, brilliant. So let's go back to sure. um, the stuff that we're here. We'll see if we can save people's lives in a slightly different way. Maybe the, uh, the sort of conundrums that we get ourselves in in other ways. Um, should we start? Should we? We were going to talk about the birth certificate in the last one. We didn't have enough time because there's a sort of um, a lot of people are slowly waking up to this, but a lot of people don't know the um, what do they call it? The, the not the delusion, the deception. Yes. Yes, the deception of the birth certificate. I think we mentioned it last time. Um, mm. I touched on it briefly, but also I think we touched on the word register. Yes. Okay, so so many people are blase about words okay they fall into they don't know what the word actually means things like license they don't understand that license means asking permission so you go well if it's if i own the car then who am i asking permission from to drive it why do i need a driver's license remember license does not mean qualified or certified no it just means asking permission so register you go okay what does register mean register means you're ha basically it means handing over to the king so you're handding something over so what am i handing over here well, you're Is that where over... the reg comes in, R-E-G? Yes. There you go, handing over to the king. As soon as you said it, I went... <laughs> That's right. It's regis, register, register the king. That's right, yeah. handing over to the... The, the, the suffix E-R means carrying out the action of. So anything with er on the end, you're doing the action. So if you bake, and that yes. one, you're, you're a baker. A baker. Yes, <laughs> very good, yeah. <laughs> So that's a good way of remembering it. That's the clean version anyway. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> yes, I, I get what you mean. <laughs> Hopefully everyone now knows what register means. <laughs> yes. So wake up to that. When any corporation, government, department says, can you register something? Just know you are handing over ownership of something. Hmm. Now, in this case, with the birth certificate, now it's slightly different depending on which country you're operating in. But all countries are corporations, okay? And they all operate a similar system. They're either a trust operating as a corporation or a corporation operating as a trust. Now, in this UK corporation, you uh, are offered to register your children. Now, what you're actually doing is you're handing over legal title to the child. Now, I don't want anyone to panic, everyone, because people are learning this. Go, oh, my God, mm. oh, my God. Look, the system, the entire system is a con. It's a confidential, uh, no, sorry, confident, uh, what's the word now? I'm, I'm missing it. Um, oh, it's, confidence it's, it's, trick. Confidence trick, thank you very much. Sometimes yeah, I've got multiple topics in my brain. No, no, it's all right. I'm, I, know, I know what it's like. <laughs> confidence trick, thank you very much for that. Um, but yes, it's a confidence trick, okay? The entire system is not legitimate. It is not lawful in any way. You've been scammed. Mm. So don't think you're bound by any of this. You're not. But it will not stop these criminal bureaucrats who hide behind the legal fiction called uh, government from acting upon you. All right. It won't stop them. So register. What have you done? Well, when you look at the form, depending again, which country you're operating in and depending on the age and all the rest of it, um, where you place your um, it will probably ask you a couple of questions. One will be your name and you'll probably be asked to write in all caps. Another thing it will do, the, the registration form will ask for your surname. Now, this is a trap, okay? Because the word surname is a combination of two words. One means surety, and the other one means name. So surname is a combination of surety name. Now, a surety is someone who is accepted to pay the debts of someone else. Your surety of someone else's performance. 
So if they, this is how the government trick you, by the way. They don't ask straight questions. No. They'll say something like, what is your surname? What they're asking is, what is your debtor's name? Yes. Okay? Now, yes. if you fill it out, you are, you're agreeing that you've now become the debtor. Yes. Simple as that. That's how they do it. And that's so the kind of, that will get into contract law and stuff, but that's yeah. you're basically forming a contract at that point, even yeah. though you don't know it. Even though you don't know it. Exactly. Mm. You're agreeing to a contract that isn't even written on the paper. Mm. Uh, this is done through mortgage contracts as well, because they all put a separate contract off the paper you don't even know about, but you'll agree to it anyway. Um, you're tricked. By the way, uh, that violates informed consent. Okay, so if you do not have informed consent on any contract, you have the right to terminate it. The contract itself is null and void. So remember this. This is why I try and teach people basic contract law. Because if you know basic contract law, you can see all this stuff and see the fraud that it yes. is. Yes. So birth certificates. This is how they trick you. So the mother um, will say, put your name in. So you, you, she'll use this um, surname. If she fills that box in, well, she's agreed to be the debtor. You, you've, you've put down your surname, your slave name. You're now acting as the slave, okay? Then there will be some other boxes where the name of the child will be written in. Now, remember, the child, the word, the word child is a legal title, okay? It means chattel, which is the same as pigs, goats, that sort of stuff, okay? Means an animal owned by someone else, chattel. A farmer owns his chattel, which is the pigs and goats. Yes. Child is a legal title. Parent is also a legal title. Parent comes from pay rent. You're paying rent to have the use of the child that you've given over to the state. So there'll be some legal titles. One will be child, and it probably it will more than likely be written in uh, all uppercase. The, the word will be child, all uppercase. That turns it into a legal title. Or sometimes it will say infant. That's a legal title, okay? Infant means the person who cannot speak. So the mother fills out the form. She puts in a uh, surname, so she's now the debtor, she's the slave. Uh, she's also the informant. She signs off on that. She then puts in the name of the child. Now, the name of the child has now had the legal title child or in infant applied to the name. Okay. Now, the name, the title itself, and this is the thing with the system. The, the people behind the system know they cannot control your name. They can't do it because you never authorized that. You are the author of your name. Mm. Therefore, they can't control it. So what they do is they either control a new name that you accept like surname they control that or they will con or, or they will create a legal title and if you accept the legal title then they can control you yes so the way it works is that you've the, the birth certificate is all written out you've now handed over or the mother and the father has now handed over the legal title child or infant over to the state okay so that's the legal title the legal title is now owned by the state so the own in quotes, that, that, sorry, the state, in quotes, owns the child now, okay? So, because you're a parent the par who pays rent, um, you've given up title to the child. You might have ownership of the child, but remember, ownership does not mean you own something. <laughs> this is the language again. People don't yes. understand. So, a lot of people, because they've been dumbed down, they've been to a government school, they just think if you own something, you own it outright. No, you don't. Ownership gives the game away. Ownership, maritime law. Anything with ship on the end is maritime law. So if you say I own something, you're, oper you're operating in a jurisdiction you don't even understand or, don't, or you are unaware of. Within ownership, there is also title and rights that people don't understand, that don't even exist. Okay, So you can own something, but you might not have title to it. Okay, You can own something, but you might not have rights to it. So this would be like, for example, someone who owns a property, got a lordial title, they're the landlord, they rent it out. Although the landlord owns the property, he doesn't have the right to use it because the tenant does. So yes. the landlord can't enter. That's very simple. So if you can wrap your brain around that, then you can start to picture what is going on here within the legal system. What they're doing is they're applying legal titles to you and stripping you of your rights, and you don't even know it, okay? Mm. Again, driver's license, you're asking permission to drive your own car. That means you've given away your right to drive your car in the first place. And you don't even know it. So, the, the, go ahead. Well, I was just going to interrupt just to say that as if people are listening to this, and as you said, don't panic, blah, blah, blah. I, am I right in thinking this can be rectified by rebutting these situations and uh, correcting it? But we'll get to that a little later. Yes. 
Yes. Now, here's the thing that um, I know the system is very complicated to understand. And anyone watching this, please do your research. This is going to take you some time to learn. OK, I always say to the average person out there, put one evening a week aside and say, right, that evening, every week, don't care what's happening, I am going to learn this stuff. I'm going to learn contract law. I'm going to learn about notices, affidavits, how court should work, how warrants should work. Because if you learn how it works, you can spot the fraud. Yes. You can spot the fraud. You then know how to act and counteract it. Okay. So going back to the birth certificate, the scam. And this is why it's so dangerous. So yes. you've registered your child. Now, what happens is you've handed over title to the child. You don't own it anymore. Or, you, know, you don't have full ownership, in other words. You just have the, uh, uh, the use of the child, like a cat or a dog or something like that. Nice. Yes. <laughs> I mean, some parents at some point will be thinking, this is quite handy because my child is so unruly. You can have him back. Thank you very yes, much. Right. You know, give him well, back when he's, when he's <laughs> behaving a bit more. But that's obviously, right. that's not quite what we mean. No, 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 no. No. Unfortunately, uh, you know, the, the, the system itself, much more insidious, unfortunately. So. Mm. But it is good to laugh about it. Mm. All right. This, this is a thing I try and say. Try and treat it as a game. I know there's some serious problems in this world you know we know about the paedophile rings we know about third world we know about the child slavery uh, with the cobalt mines you know for the evs and all we know all this right it can drag you down yes and i've had some dark days thinking about it because i get so frustrated that i can't do anything about it well not yet i'm working on that <laughs> mm, good man <laughs> that keeps me going but try and treat it as a game try and put some humor into it all right this is another reason why the the government's trying to get rid of humor mm. You know, they're, they're, they're bash there's, there's, Hollywood hasn't made a, hot, a, a good, um, good uh, comedy. Good, yeah, haven't made a good comedy in 20 years. It, 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 they can't do it anymore. TV doesn't produce anything that's funny anymore. But anyway, we digress. So the, the birth certificate. So you've registered the child. It's now owned by the state. Now, the state can do anything they want. Now, it gets even worse because what happens is, is if you then register again with a state school a, or a public school, You've given over the last of your rights. You have no rights at all. So even as a parent, no, nope, you've given them away as well. So the school itself has full control over your child, everything. All right. That includes medical procedures. And it also includes um, indoctrination and all of it. You have no say. Mm. Think of it this way. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I was going to say, we've seen that with the... Uh... The sexualization of children that's coming in now, the very insidious um, sexualization of yes. children and, and, and all of that, which a lot of parents are still unaware is happening within the schools. And it's not just the one class, but the, the philosophy, the, the evil philosophy behind it is being seeped into other lessons yes. so that the child is being indoctrinated without even realizing it that this um, this sort of cult, if you like, is being uh, forced down their throats. And teachers are either, uh, they've come up through the system themselves, so they don't yeah. even spot it. That's half the problem. So, yeah, no, sorry, I, I just thought I'd mention it. Totally agree with you. Um, I mean, what they're doing now is, is absolutely disgusting. Some of the mm. child, you know, the books they're creating now, it's a few years ago, that would be, pornography and and if any adult was caught doing that say 10 years ago they'd be put in prison yeah no with snow boats but now it's it's normal yeah it's almost laudable from Correct. the the wrong perspective which we must of course push back against we have to yeah we have to um so yeah so what happens is, is um you, you know so you, you register again with the school and you put the child in there and you give up all of your rights you have no rights to the child at all now at that point the school has become the parent OK, here's the thing. I mean, is anyone listening to this? Have you taken your child out of school and gone on holiday and then get back and then the headmaster sends you a fine? This is mm. mindset stuff. How can a headmaster fine you for taking your own child out of school? You go, hang on a minute, I thought I owned a child. Yeah. Well, you don't. You've now breached a policy. Now the headmaster can send you a fine and that's the rest of it. You know. So this is the thing. This is how social services operate. Now, social services were set up for the oversight, if you like, of the collateral for the monetary system. So we get into the other side of the birth certificate. So the birth certificate is actually, actually, it's a little bit more complex. 
Let me just try and touch on the birth certificate stuff. Mm. A lot of people think it's a one document thing. It's mm. not. Now, the way I figure this out, this is piecing it together. The way it works is because your mom is the author of you and created you, right? Um, she has full control over you. Now, what she's done, and she doesn't know this, and your dad's as well, he signs off on it as well, um, is they create a manifest, basically, of you. This is why you're weighed. So you're weighed, you color of your eye, all that sort of stuff. You know, you're all written down. It's a manifest, okay? Now, when your mum signs off on it and your dad signs off on it, they are the creator, creators of you. But what they're doing is they're handing that over. Now, that manifest is a little bit like a manufacturer's statement of origin. Like you would have in a car. Yes, exactly. Now, everything with a serial number, by the way, you don't own it. All right, so no matter what it is, mobile phone, computer, if it has a serial number, there will be a manufacturer's statement of origin somewhere out there that is the proof of ownership, which you don't have. So without right. it, you are you don't own it. You do, you are not you don't own it at all. You don't have any rights. You're just using it. Okay. Mm. Anyway, so go back to your birth certificate. So your mum and dad sign off on this manifest. It's like a manufacturer statement of origin, if you like. It's that document that has the value. It's that document that is then created into a bond. Now the way the bonds used to, I don't, don't know if we spoke about this last time uh, yeah. about how bonds are, are sort of created. And uh, but what they did in the olden days, um, they used to put the bonds into a box. Okay, don't know if we mentioned it last time. No, we didn't. I do so many podcasts. I can't yeah, remember. no, I appreciate it. We, we didn't. We didn't mention this. Okay, so the way it works in the olden days, several hundred years ago, um, when a bond was created, a bond was uh, my word is my bond. If you like, it had right. Fire, okay. Yeah. So you would make the statement of the bond of the value or whatever it is. Okay, and then what would happen is um, someone you'd have some witnesses who'd sign off on it. You would have a registrar, registrar that would sign off on it and and place a seal on that bond. The bond would then go to the Bank of England and it would be placed in a wooden box. The wooden box would have two locks on it with two separate keys that are locked. The two keys are separate. They're not the same key. One key would go to the Bank of England and the other one would go to the registrar or the person who was authorised to create certificates from the bond. Right. Now, the certificates also had value because it was based upon the bond itself. OK, um, if you look at the symbol of the Unum Sanctum, for example, you will see two keys crossed on the symbol. That's to symbolize the bond. The Bank of England, I believe, has two keys everywhere, every now and again on the front door and all the rest of it symbolizes the bond. So it's that bond that's created and your mum creates it with the manuf manufacturer statement of origin. From that, a certificate or certificate of live birth is created by the registrar. By the way, when your mum gives birth to you, every hospital has a registrar. And they sign your birth certificate and they stamp it, boom. Well, that's, what they're doing is saying that that is now a securitized instrument. It's a financial instrument. So your mother's manufacturer statement of origin is the actual... Um, Financial instrument of value because the registrar signed off on it and stamped it. You can look at it. You can look mm. at it. look this up. And then off that the certificate. So the Vatican or the Bank of England or certain you know international monetary fund, we don't really know who, but they get the certificate of live birth. You don't have access to that. That yeah. certificate of live birth can then be made to create credit. Okay, it's also used as the bond to create the Sestic AV Trust. So what happens is, is when you're born, you are placed into trust or your legal title is placed into trust using their certificate of live birth. The certificate of live birth is the thing of value. It's normally called the res, okay? It's the body of value that supports a trust. Now within that trust, they can then create credit in your name. And that's what they do. But they trick you. A lot of the times the credit is be is being created by your consent but you don't even know you're doing it mm. so for example if you open a bank account a bank account is not yours it's actually owned by the bank itself you've become an administrator of that account and not only that but you've allowed that bank to use your cystic av trust to create the credit in the first place now you've done that, they'll be really happy to say, we'll set you up some direct debits, we'll give you a debit card and all the rest of it. Well, the thing is, is every time you use a direct debit on your bank account, you are creating new credit in your name. <laughs> every time. You're creating new credit in your yes. name. Right. You're not making a payment. 
new credits being created. Um, if you use a debit card, so if you go into a shop and you want to buy a pair of jeans for 90 quid or something, you hand over a debit card, you're creating brand new 90 quid in credit in your name to buy the jeans. You bought that. You go, there you go, oh, thank you. In your name, using your word, using your Sester KV Trust, using your credit. I've given you the credit for the jeans. Now, the problem is whenever there's credit, there has to be a debtor. Whenever there's a debtor, it has to be credit. They go hand in hand. You can't have one without the other. So you right. go, okay, then, well, who's the debtor? It's the bank. <laughs> so the bank's in debt? Yes, to you. <laughs> yes, not that they let you know that. They don't. They don't. Well, they sort of do, but they use language that the average person doesn't understand. Okay. Right. The average person doesn't understand what a statement is or a bill and all the rest of it. And they'll use language, they'll use beneficiary language. You've got to learn how to uh, read legalese. Hmm. You've also got to notice what is missing from certain sentences as well. That's a, that's a big clue. Um, just take a side note. Let me give you an example of what is missing from a sentence that makes the sentence mean something different than the way you think it does. Yes. Let's use the word inclusive. Okay. So when you hear a politician on TV and he says, we want to be inclusive. And let's say there are six groups, A, B, C, D, E, F. And then the politicians will say, we are inclusive of groups A, B, C, D, E. Where's F? Yes. F's been excluded. So when the politicians use the terminology inclusive, what they're actually saying is excluded. So that means everything not mentioned has been excluded. So this is how legal ease works. Now you can understand how difficult it is to read because the average person out there is reading on a basic Oxford English Dictionary interpretation. Yeah. And it's just they're just recognizing text on a, on a, on a piece of paper. They're not even reading mm. it. They don't even know what the words are. They don't even know what's missing from the text. So, um, credit, how credit's created. So, deb debit card. Oh, by the way, you might have noticed that the banks are now issuing debit cards to children. I did. I've seen that, yeah. You've seen that? It's like, oh, God. It's just getting worse. So, are the children creating, they're creating credit when they use these debit cards. Mm -hmm. And they don't know. If only they knew, they'd say, well, I've just created 100 quid, so I don't need to pay it back because I've just created it. Thank you very much. I mean, you know, if kids know this, they'd be very savvy, <laughs> wouldn't they? <laughs> yes. They'd be buying everything. Can I just ask you this question? Because I, I heard this on a different podcast, in, yep. and we may go to, go to this, that the, the birth certificate's created into a bond, and it's, it's, I think, floated on the stock market, or it's yep. gaining value all the time. And actually, when you go to buy something, I heard this example of uh, if you went into this was an American lady and she said, if you go into Walmart and you bought yourself a tractor and you go up there and you say, I'd like to buy that. Oh, no, I think it was a actually it wasn't a tractor. It was a uh, it doesn't matter what it was, really, but it was a lawnmower. And she okay. saw this lawnmower, said, uh, I'd like that lawnmower, please, because I've got a big garden. It's a, it's a little tractor lawnmower. I think that's where the confusion was. Not that that's important. <laughs> and uh, so she said, thank you very much. Uh, and can you deliver it? Blah, blah, blah. Um, and I'll sign for it. Correct. And she said, well, if you did that, of course, the people at the desk would go, I'm, I'm sorry, it's a 200 pound uh, item or 200 dollars, whatever it is. Uh, can we have it? And she said, I'm already in credit. I'm I'm basically letting you go to the Treasury to collect the money. I've, yes. already, I've already paid for it. And she said, the problem is actually doing this in the real world when people don't understand that's how it works, that you've already got all this money because it's been floated on, because it, it's your birth certificate, even though you've given the credit away, but it's yours because the contract was not disclosed to you and so therefore it's null and void so it is actually yours mm -hmm. is, is is that is that all sort of that of. you're very close sort of. right okay. yeah you're absolutely true that this was not told to us in any way we did not know that we were beneficiaries in a trust okay yeah. um all that you said is absolutely true because really all you would do say for example you want to buy a house mm. you get the mortgage contract right and it was 250,000. So you agree 250,000 credit to be taken out of your trust fund. Just signing the mortgage contract means you've bought the house. You go, there you go. Thank you. The house is mine. I don't need to make payments. 
Why am no. I making payments? Because I've signed up through the power of the signature. No one understands this. Every time you sign a document, especially when you're dealing with corporations and government departments, they securitize it, which means they float it on the stock market in layman's terms and they make more credit off it. They'll sell it as a securitized instrument, as a monetary instrument. But often the form that you fill doesn't even represent what you think it means. Yes. And, it, and I've heard that we interviewed um, Stan McDonald um, and he was telling us about exactly that. You go and you, once you've written the document, the fact that you're having to pay anything back is ridiculous because they're going to make 10 times the amount of what you've, yes. the mortgage you paid for the house. And you yes. don't know. You don't know. They don't know. So the, the, the way it works is going back to the way it works for the trust fund, you see. Because the government, Vatican, if you like, by the way, the Vatican um, comes from the um, the uh, underworld goddess Vatica, and Vatica is the goddess that seizes the souls and keeps them in the underworld. So you sort of begin to understand why it's called the Vatican. Okay, got it, because that's where all the dead souls are. Mm. Because that's what the third crown of the Unum Sanctum is, is the actual taking of your soul. This is what baptism is. So if you get baptized, so what you do is, um, I know we're getting a little bit off topic, but I'll be, I'll be quick. So um, before you get baptized, all you've done is offered the church your soul. That's all you've done in the birth certificate. If you get baptized, then that is handing over your soul to the to the church. Um, and then they can have control of your soul and all the rest of it. I mean, it, it's a com commerce is a, uh, in layman's terms, it's like a pagan religion when you start digging to it. It's all got ceremony in there. It's all twisted. The God they talk about is not um, the Christian God. Um, it's Moloch, Baal and all this. I mean, you could go down that rabbit hole if mm, you want. Mm. So getting well, back, yeah. getting back to yeah, the nuts and bolts, the stuff that is important. <laughs> the stuff that we can work with. Yes, this is what I concentrate on. You know, it's, it's good to know the history, but absolutely I don't know the function of stuff. So what it is, is you're placed into trust and you, your name, because your name creates the credit you're the author of it it is my credit whenever i create credit there has to be a debtor on the other side has yes. to be so you go okay who is the debtor well that would be the one who's administrating your trust for you that would be the government or namely the treasury right so every time you sign off on some credit you go yeah okay here's the credit thank you very much okay there's a debt on the other side of that that is now the responsibility of the treasury. But the treasury basically has to pay you back. They're the debtor of this credit and debt system. But they don't want to be. They don't want to be the debtor. No. So they trick you. So what they do, this is where the debt market comes into play. Okay, and the last time I checked, the debt market was at least, was it 19 trillion or something like that? The, the debt market, something like that? Yeah, could and be. Over nice. Three trillion was non-performing assets, I believe, but uh, which means you've got debt that's not even performing. In other words, you're not even getting interest payments off it. Um, anyway, so what happens is, is the, the these governments all around all around the world they sell the debt on the debt market, layman's terms, and then other companies will pick it up. One of them is utility companies like gas and electric and water and all the rest of it. So what they'll do is they'll buy this debt. You see, why, why would you want to buy a debt? This is something that yeah. confuses me because you think, well, I wouldn't want to buy somebody else's debt because it might mean I'm liable for it. Yep. Well, normally when you buy a debt, it's because there's interest to be paid on it. Ah, so you're earning the interest from the debt and then the debt gets cleared plus some. Yes. Right. Okay, that's okay. One way that makes sense. It. Another way is you can buy the debt because what you're doing is you're going to sell the debt and make commission off it. So you're going to pass it on. Right. That's another way of doing it, which is what the utility companies tend to do. So what they'll do is, now remember, the uh, going back to your trust fund, Sester Gay V Trust, um, the government or the treasury has actually already used your credit to create the electricity, to dig the coal mines, to get the oil out the ground, all of it, uh, to maintain the roads, to build the schools, all hospitals, you name it, build everything, everything you can possibly think of that the government provides in services, Pretty terrible services, if you ask me, because I yes. can't drink my own tap water. But anyway, um, so all these so-called services have already been paid for using your credit. You've signed off on it. You've said to the Treasury, yeah, OK, build a hospital. I'll sign off on it. There you go. 
I'm not in debt to anybody. They mm. are. They've got to give me the, the credit back. So they sell it to utility companies. And so a utility company um, will trick you into thinking you're buying gas, electric, water, that sort of stuff, when in fact you're not. You are buying debt. A lot of these are credit brokers. They're actually registered credit brokers. Go and look them up. <laughs> you know, you, they, they will tell you. This is you see the average person is illiterate. They don't see it. Go look. In fact, why you them, see that? I mean, you say that, but of course we're illiterate because they don't reveal this. This is obviously you know occulted, you occulted information. Because why would they want to tell you? Because they'll be out of pocket themselves. Yes, it's a big scam. That's mm. right. But yeah, it's not taught in schools. Surprise, surprise. Yeah, you won't find it in TV, TV shows, anything like that. You know, you won't see Panorama doing anything like this, or no. there won't be a documentary explaining this. So unless you act to actively go out and search for this, you will never know. Now the good news is, there's hundreds of us, probably thousands of people who, who know this. I'm just little fish. Mm. It's a big pond, right? Just You're a very pond. nice fish. Thank you very much. <laughs> it's a pleasure. <laughs> but I'm just a little tiny you know, dropping the well. There's so many people out there. They're all giving this information out there. So no one's got any excuse of saying, I didn't know. Really? So, <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. Well, this is it. I mean, I think there's a great awakening now and people yeah. will be learning all of this more. And there's a huge hunger, I think, as we as we feel more oppressed. What I wanted to ask you was, um, on the basis that, that this information is out there and it's usable, if we start to use it and, and claim you know, say I sign up with a new uh, gas, not that I've got gas, actually, electricity provider. And yep. say, actually, I'd like, to, uh, yes, I'll have electricity, please. And I sign. And then I say to them, there you go. I've just created the credit. So I won't be paying you anymore. Um, I'll have as much as I like. Just there you go. What, what would happen? Would they just <laughs> go, um, I'm sorry, sir? <laughs> right. Now, here's the problem. We've got a fight on our hands. Mm. This is happening with all government agencies. It isn't just utilities. It's the police. It's the justice system. Justice system. The courts. All of these. Are, what, what's happening? We're beginning to see cracks because more and, pe more, and more people are learning this. They're ste stepping up and they're handing out their, their own paperwork and they're challenging this. And what's happening is the people behind these um, legal fictions, these corporations, they're literally breaking the law at this point. They're mm. becoming unlawful, all right? Instead of actually saying, all right, you've got us, fair enough, yeah, you can have your electric and gas, we'll leave you alone. You're one of the clever ones, you figured it out, not a problem. Instead of doing that, which is the honourable thing, even though what they're doing to us is a scam, they're not. They're doubling down, and they're getting violent, and they're breaking indoors, and you're going, at this point, that's breaking every rule in the book. See, even in their corrupt system, even in their twisted system of commerce, there is no involuntary servitude. You must give consent. So if you withdraw your consent, they cannot act. If they act, it becomes unlawful. And they're doing it now. Police mm. are acting unlawful. We've seen so many videos now. Of, I just saw a video this morning of, I think it was 12 policemen breaking into a uh, home of a pregnant woman and they're pouncing on this pregnant woman and she's crawling on the floor and I, I couldn't watch it no I, I can't click on that I would get so enraged I, I, I but anyway so what we're noticing now is that the people behind the system behind legal fictions they're now literally breaking the law so it's going to take a mass effort on us to stand our ground it's going to be hundreds of thousands if not millions of us serving our own paperwork and saying look Who's the creditor of this mortgage? I want my car back. I want my manufacturer's statement of origin back. Okay, I want to deregister my car. I want to deregister my business. I want to take my business back. I want my house back. Mm. I don't want it with the land registry anymore. Okay, all of it. It's going to take a mass effort. And everyone can do it. You can do it in the privacy of your own home. Do a few notices. Learn this stuff. Do it on a computer. Get together with other people in your area. Learn this. Meet up once a week and get educated. That's what the Sovereign Project is all about, is trying to get people educated. It's Fight Club. Let's learn this. Yes. And then when there's enough of no, it. And, and uh, this, is, this is absolutely essential and, and for the, the, new, the new era that I think we are about to enter. Yes. Uh, this is, we, we, we've got to learn all of this. Now, I, this has just come into my mind, and I, I don't want to break the flow. 
That's right. I was speaking to somebody today, and um, he said, "Now, don't take this the wrong way. This is That's me. Right. I am I'm only the messenger. You could be the messenger." He said, "I listened to Sovereign because I said, oh, I've got Sovereign Peter on the stuff.'" He said, "Oh, that was really interesting. He was talking about registering this and registering that, and you, you know, you give it all away." He said, "I went onto their website, and the first thing it said." is register with us. I know it does. I said, oh, <laughs> I hadn't noticed that. Uh, so I said, it's I will awesome. ask Pete about that. That is true. That is an actual typo. It's a, actually a long going. See, I didn't design the website. A, fr- right. a friend of mine, God bless her. And if you're watching, you know who you are. And I respect everything she did for me. I mean, she was so good. She'd never designed a, la- um, a website before ever. So she had to teach herself. So she went off, yes. taught herself how to do a, a, a web. She's still learning this. And yes. She put the website together, and I gave her some documents to do and all. And she did all of that on her own. Did a fantastic job, in my opinion. And I read it, and I did notice it says, you put register. I said, <laughs> oh, okay. I'll change it. I'll change it. And she never did. And I never had the, you know, I was like, yeah. she'd done it for free and helped me. It's like. <laughs> yeah, no, no, it's very difficult. I, it was just, it was just the, the irony, I suppose, that they were yes. saying, "Oh, when you register, you're giving away the legal title." And he said, and "The first thing it said was register." And I thought, "Oh, well, that's interesting. I wonder how many other people pick up on that." But I just thought it's I'd good. throw that in. It's good. But, it's good to see because it shows that people are watching and learning. But now, hmm. the thing with words as well. Just because you see the word register doesn't necessarily mean the pe- the person using it is trying to steal something from you. Mm. All right. I mean, obviously, we used it as an innocent way. Just register your interest, that sort of stuff. We weren't stealing your data or anything like that. We weren't going to try and steal title from you. It's like the word understand. A lot of people go, oh, I'm not going to use that word. No, no, you can. It's not a problem. You, mm. you can even use the word child and parent if you want in casual conversation. Just be aware of the dangers of using these words when you're dealing with government. If you're going to deal yes. with government, don't use the word register. Don't use the word child. Don't use the word parent. Don't use the word driver. Don't use the word vehicle, right? Mm. If I challenge the dictionary if you're dealing with government, say, what dictionary are you using before I can even continue in a conversation with you? But yeah, um, it's good to see people are spotting the words. But remember, it's who's using them. Yes, the no, because you're different. not you're not government you're not government, oh. and it's not legalese within your domain. And 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 absolutely get that. the The other question I I've bought the eleventh edition of Black's Dictionary. Okay, which cost me a lot of money, not and true. I have to say I was very disappointed because all the terms that I think are in earlier editions have become a lot less tricky. Yes. So I've looked up things like driver and it doesn't have the same connotations as perhaps the earlier diff- ones. And I don't even think understand is even in it. I can't think uh, off the top of my head. And right. so you, you think, oh, are they shifting? Th- are they shifting the way that language is used so that you still don't know? Yep. Um, and, and has now one got to buy an earlier edition, which is not as expensive, but still a fair chunk of money, seeing as it's a dictionary, um, compared to, say, the Oxford English Dictionary, which is a hell of a lot cheaper. But I wanted to have that because we've been having these conversations and I wanted to be able to look terms up or if people ask me or what have you, and it's always good to have and it's, you know... That's good. So. Okay. Yeah, be interested in your thoughts on that. Absolutely. This is a good point. Okay. Now, here's the thing. I'm glad that people are getting into this, and I'm glad people understand about Black's Law, and I think there's another one, Bouvier's Dictionary on Law, that sort of stuff, and there's another one, Ecclesiastical Law, I believe. There's actually multiple dictionaries out there regarding law. Now, good to know about Black's Law. At least a lot of people are learning this, but you still don't need to make an assumption that the person who sent you a letter has used Black's Law. Right. Still don't make that assumption. And you've got to also not assume what version have they used. Because there's 11, I think, off the top of my head. The first one's the most expensive. I think it's, if you get an original copy of that, it's about 180 quid if you can get your hands on one. Hmm. But there's different versions, as you say, and the wording slightly changes the, the description of the words. Well, okay. Well, it's not good enough now just to say to somebody, are you using Black's Law? It's what version are you using? Are you... you Using version one, two, three, four, and then I will know what the correct actual yes. definition of the word is. But even then, even then, you don't even have to mention the word Black's Law. You can just simply, 
when you get documentation through the post, you can send it back and just ask them what dictionary are you using? Burden of proof is on them. Yes, that's true. That's very good. <laughs> and they go, yeah. oh. <laughs> oh. And they probably don't even know. I mean, you know, oh, some of the clerks and things like that who are writing these, you know, they just know the legalese they've got to, they have to, you know, they've probably been trained to say, oh, this is how you write your documents. Yes. And, and, and so they don't actually know the implication of the words they're using. It's just that's what's been trained in their yeah. mind. And so when you say, well, what dictionary are you using? They'll be thinking, well, what do you mean? I've got the English Oxford. Oh, really? OK, well, that changes all those meanings. Of course it <laughs> back does. To, to back to English. As we, you know, it's no longer, now you've said that, it's no longer legalese. Correct. I'm not dealing with that at all. So yeah. you, you should always ask, what language are we using, please? If they say English, okay, thank you very much. Uh, what style are we using? Which is font, that sort of stuff. You know, yeah. you can quote the, I think it's this Chica Chicago book or, or the Chica Chicago Manual of Styles, if you like. Um, so you can even ask them, so what style are you using? And then after that, you can also go on. You can even ask something like, um, yeah, what dictionary are you using? Yes. So I'll put the burden of proof on them. But if someone like one of the plebs, if you like, someone low down who doesn't understand any of that, they still have to answer your questions. Mm. They can't just ignore you. Say, no, I've asked you a question. Do it a notice. Send yes. a notice and you put it as one, two, three. I need these questions answered. Number one, point number one, what language are you using? Number two, what style are you using? Number three, what dictionary are you using? It has to be answered. If they don't, they're in default of that notice. And then when they're in default of the notice, the old situation is not, e is not even relevant because now they're in default and now you can go after them because they're in default of your original notice. Then they're yes. in even more trouble. <laughs> yes. And the more people who do all this sort of stuff, as you said, that mass movement of it, suddenly they'll have to do something about their system because they'll realise people are onto them. Yes. Um, yes. I mean, when does a scam come to an end when mm. everybody knows the scam? When everybody yeah. knows it, it comes to an end. And the other thing that um, has come out in these conversations, and I, it may have been you and it may have been one of the others, is that when you're dealing with these corporations, I mean, as, you've, as you eloquently said before, corporation is basically just a, it's basically an idea. It's on paper. Legal fiction. It's a, it's a, yeah. And so when you're trying to deal with the corporation, it's best to deal with an individual because you're making them personally yes. liable rather than this non-entity, because a non-entity can't put its hand in its pocket. You need a living person to actually do that. Correct, absolutely correct. Now, this is when you do notices. Whatever you do, do not send notices saying, dear sir or madam, or another one classic, to whom it may concern. Concern. Everyone's well, going to read it. Yeah, it doesn't concern me. No, <laughs> exactly. No ben, you've just wasted a stamp and some ink. Yeah. So, now it gets a little bit complicated here. Mm. I'll explain why you go after a living, breathing man or woman, if you like, although technically you're not. Now, I'll get into that. OK. See, what's going on? Everything is commerce. All of it. Mm. Okay? Doesn't matter. It's the courts. It's the police. It's whatever. Does not matter what it, countries, nations. It is all commerce. It's business. It's corporations doing co business with other corporations. So you've just got to get into the mindset of that. And just realize that the birth certificate that you have is the birth of your corporation. Yes. Yeah. You haven't claimed it yet, but it's there for you. So you are the ghost director of that corporation. Oh, I like that. The yeah. ghost director. That's right. Mm. So, you know, OK, now I can play the game. Now, going back to, um, yes, you do not want to just say, you know, sue the police or sue the National Health or sue whatever, because that's just a legal fiction nothingness, okay? And you'll just get churned into the system, spat out, nothing will happen. However, if you go after an employee who does work there, okay, he's implicated, remember, because he's an employee. Employee means implicated. An employee isn't someone who works for somebody and gets paid. You're implicated within that corporation. Well, so what does that mean? Let's say Joe Bloggs. Joe Bloggs decides to work for McDonald's. So he fills the form out. Yep, blah, blah, blah. Signs the service agreement contract, whatever it is. He signs the contract. Now, what he's actually doing is he is now got his birth certificate. Let's pretend that's his birth certificate, right? Which yeah. is a corporation, okay? And then you've got McDonald's, which is another corporation over here. Now, what he's done is he says his 
birth certificate corporation is now in commerce with McDonald's. Yeah. He doesn't know he's done that. No. That's what you've done. So that makes you an employee. So that, Matt, that means that your um, corporation birth certificate is now implicated with the McDonald's corporation. You are like a junior partner. And 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 is that why? Because a corporation can't deal with a living person. It can only deal with another corporation. Hence, your birth certificate is the corporation. And that's right. why you can marry the two together. Got it. OK. Absolutely correct. Corporation only deals, uh, or oh, sorry, commerce only deals with corporations, corps, corporation, dead body, dead entities. So commerce only deals in the dead entities that exist on paper only. Yes. Not the living breathing. Yes. See, it's 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 all falling into place. You know, it's it's a yeah. slow realization. All of this, I'm sure, with the viewers as well, and it, yeah. and it takes a it takes time to sort of get that into the system. So yes, so yes. you're in, so sorry, I interrupted, but That's I just fine. wanted to make that point clear. That was good. Yes. So this is the thing. You've got to picture what's going on, hmm. and you've also got to understand there's many different jurisdictions you can play this game in. You've got legislation, you can play in acts and statutes, you can mess about with case law and all the rest of it if you want to play this game, okay? Just remember that those jurisdictions do not apply to you, the living, breathing, ever, unless you enter into it. Mm. However, they do enter into corporations that are registered with the system. So, McDonald's, for example, it's a registered corporation. That means case law applies now. That means that legislation applies, acts and statutes apply, um, you know, discrimination law applies now because they've accepted the jurisdiction of these, you know, acts and statutes. So you go after someone who works for the corporation by name, say um, Billy Bob, okay, Billy Bob. Now, if Billy Bob doesn't do his job properly, if he ignores you, okay, he just steamrolls over you and ignores your notices and all the rest of it, there's two ways you can handle that. You can go after the CEO of the big corporation, which would be, you know, McDonald's, for example, by name. So you you go to him, serve him notice and say, one of your employees has violated my rights, X, Y, and Z, right? Mm. Now, it depends on the game you're playing. You've got to evaluate the situation. This is why no two remedies are ever the same. You might think, oh, hang on a minute. Um, the... CEO of McDonald's might actually be on the side of that employee because the employee is acting on what the CEO has actually said. It might be a corporate policy, right? So if you try doing that, you'll find that you're going to be fighting a massive corporation with almost endless pocket money, you know, millions of pounds they can throw at you. Yeah. You, you're not going to win that. So you go, okay, I'm going to change the game. I am not going to go after the, the McDonald's big corporation i'm going to go after the employee by himself and i'm going to sue him for violating my rights depending on what it is now here's the game you will know that you're actually going after his corporation his birth certificate right yes <laughs> yes, yes you yes, see yes, how yes. the game's played yes he won't know this you know, he's billy bob he just works sweeps a, you know he's in mcdonald's he makes a few burgers he no clue of this now, the reason why I go after his corporation, because remember what Billy Bob's done, he's registered everything. He's registered his house, his car, everything. He's given it away. Well, what, what's he done? He's given it away to the UK corporation. Mm. That means it's up for grabs for me, isn't it? <laughs> I guess so, yeah. So now I can use the lien process. So this is how liens work. You can't apply a lien to a living, breathing man or woman. You cannot do that, okay? You can't apply a lien, or incredibly, it'd be almost impossible, I don't even see a way you could do it, to anyone with a loyal title. You can't do that. So what's okay. a lien? Just remind us what a lien. Okay, a lien is like a commercial claim. Think of it like a backwards loan. So in other words, let's say I was going to borrow some money from the bank, and let's pretend that the bank actually lends out money for now. You know, forget mm. the credit and all that stuff. Mm. But let's say it, you know, it loans out gold coins. So if I go in there and I borrow ten thousand pounds gold coins, the, the bank will say, "Well, what is the collateral you're going to give us if something goes wrong?" And I say, "Well, I've got a car and it's worth ten thousand pounds." And they go, "Yeah, fine, not a problem." So then they'll give me the loan, and the car is collateral. Yes. Now a lien is simply a a loan, layman's terms, a loan in reverse. So let's say, for example, you harm me in some way, you 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 violate my rights. What? I, yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that. Yeah. Um, 
You've, you've, you've trespassed been. against me. <laughs> you've carried out a tortuous act against me. I'm not oh. serving you notice. Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> right. Good, good right hook there. Thank you very much. <laughs> Don't hit me back there. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. <laughs> and um, so, yeah, so you've, you've harmed me. Yes. So I will then say to you, you owe me £10,000 damages. Right. Because <laughs> yeah, I said, well, you owe me. If you owe me 10 well, grand. I, damn, I wish I hadn't done it now. <laughs> but you don't have the 10 grand. No. So what I will do is I'll create a lien of the 10 grand upon you, like a loan, and I will take your assets instead as collateral. That's so let's say you don't. Gone, then. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's I way. go, I come to your house and I go, oh, what? I like that sign in the background. It says the Vogue Show. I'll, oh, I'll yeah. That. <laughs> Well, I like that uh, thing in the back there. Yeah, I oh, like the microphone. You've got a blue one. Oh, I'm having the... <laughs> oh. <laughs> so the lien works like that. So I right. will take your assets that equate to the £10,000 uh, loan that I've applied to you. Yes. In layman's terms. That's basically how it works, right? So, so no, I don't want you to hold that. I don't want you to lose that thought. Yep. And it's kind of like the bailiffs coming in and, and you know, although they're working illegally. Yes, It's, it's kind of that feel that you know you're gonna i hadn't at this point said i won't pay you or anything you just said i'm gonna have that in collateral in collateral yes yeah okay yes, cause the, normally the way you would do it um you when you serve notice on someone you don't go straight in with the lien you normally say look you did this to me you harmed me whatever it was yeah um, and i will give you opportunity to cure yes you serve notice on them and say look this is what you did i'm going to give you 30 days to come up with some sort of um, remedy you know, or something. Remedy, yes. Say sorry, offer me something in return. And if I want to accept it, we'll say no more. And then if you don't hear from them, then you do another uh, notice. Give them, a, you know, you normally give them three. That's the three letter process. So at least you've given them three chances to resolve the situation. Once they've still ignored you, then you can switch to the lean process. All right. And that's when you grab the mics and all the gear. Yes. And, right. And that's when you send in the bailiffs. Now, yeah. the only reason I can do that. Is because I know that you've registered your house and yeah, mm. everything, and you have no title to it. So I'm now going after it. You've left it exposed. Oh I see. yes, I'm with you. So when you go back to your example with the McDonald's and Billy Bob, who's who's you can now go to him and say, well, I'm I'm having your house or car yes. or whatever it is, because you've yeah. already given it away. That's right. You've already given it away. It's I can gain access to it because it's all linked to his birth certificate. The corporation and what is this his corporation is registered with the uk corporation hmm. so i use the uh, the the legal system which is simplistically put run by the uk corporation or works in tandem with it so i'm using their own system now so all the tools are there you just got to know how to play the game and the average billy bob will have no clue what you're doing hmm. in fact you probably ignore you in fact you want people to ignore you because if they ignore you and you carry on, you get your paperwork correct and you get it all nice and done and you send it through Royal Mail and all the rest of it, all you've got to do is walk down to the, the uh, courthouse, get a summary judgment. Yeah, judge says your paperwork's good. The other person didn't even turn up. You've won. Great. Then I will get a um, certificate of liability that I can then apply to the person and say, right, well, you've got seven to, you know, two weeks to uh, pay me up. There is so much to this um, that, that, as you say, in small doses, as you alluded to, one day a week, learning this bit yes. by bit so that you become very familiar with it. Um, I, I, I need to wrap it up because I don't like these to be on too long. I know some people yeah, do a podcast of two or three minutes and you're a busy man. But before we go, and this, and also I would urge people to register on yes. your website. You, we'll change uh, it to enrol. <laughs> yeah, to enrol, to enrol. There you go. That's a much nicer word. Before you go, there's two things I want to just quickly ask you. Um, we have tomorrow, I believe, local, as as I record this, We tomorrow we have a council um, votes going on the local council things on May the fourth. Um, I I want to deregister and not be part of the system. We want to be out of the system now. I know all this whole process of doing it takes a bit of time, and I I need to get my knowledge up and not rush into all of this, and deregister my car from the DVLA. The, all of that. But when it comes to voting, let me just ask you what 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 your thoughts are on this. 
Um, personally, I think if you're registered with the voting process, you've ba basically made an agreement or a contract with them. Whether you vote, whether you use the vote or not, it seems to me is actually irrelevant. It's yeah. the fact that you've registered is the important aspect of it. Yes. Um, so, so what, what's what's your thoughts on on that side of things? Well, they're supposed to make the offer to you to reg register to vote. I believe it's every three years. I think it's been a while because I'm not right. To vote. No. Um, so a lot of these, it's a lot of these contracts that the the, the government. I say contracts; they're not real contracts, but you get the word. Mm. Um, these contracts that the government sets up. They're all short term. So MOTs is 12 months. That's why you've got to do another one. Uh, road tax is 12 months. So you have to renew. Uh, registered to vote. You have to double check this. I think it's three years. It might be four. I don't know. But if you don't then re-register, they'll send you some letters saying you haven't re-registered. And then they'll give you th like three warnings. And if you don't do it on the third, they'll say, we're going to have to take you off then. And I'll go, and I, I ignore that one as well. Yeah. Then I'll get another letter that says we've removed you from the registration blah 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 vote thing and then i don't get any junk through the post anymore and then it's gone and then it's gone it's as simple as that because some people say well you get these fines if you don't register you you know you're going to be fined and all that you just ignore all no that. it's an offer to it's an offer to pay these fines like set the census if, yeah. you, if you learn how to read it's you don't you, it's again fine that's found uh, that's found in the contract it's a breach of policy well if i haven't actually entered the contract then how can i receive a fine no, it's an offer to pay. It says, um, well, if you don't register, would you like to pay us? <laughs> yes, yes. No, I don't. <laughs> and fine, so th th thank you for clarifying that. And somebody, um, this was a slightly different point, but somebody was saying, well, what happens if, if we don't vote, if nobody votes in an election? But at my point is it doesn't really make much difference if you're registered because it's, it's, it's beyond... You vote, you, means you, nothing. Yeah. Means the last nothing. the last thing then is I've been asked um, by... Is it Priya? Priya? Oh, yes, Priya. My to partner. mention your book. He says, Oh, yes. Pete never mentions his book. Please, will you ask him about the book? And I th something, I can't remember exactly what it's called, uh, something about a thousand cuts or, or deception by a thousand cuts or. That makes sense. Thank you. Yeah, I got, when I was last time on your show, um, everyone told me off and says, You should talk about your book. And I'm, I'm always t told off because I don't. I'm not very good at self-promotion, so I think that's the reason why I found my book down here. <laughs> <laughs> I, thought, I thought, what's that doing there? So okay. Yeah. So yeah, give it. Let's give it a plug. Okay. This is for everyone who's watching. Just to say, I'm now going to promote my book. This is shameless, isn't it? Really. It is. There you go. The system, death by a thousand cuts. Um, this is like an introduction into the basics of the system. Okay. This is to get things like a Ponzi scheme and uh, debates, uh, this sort of simple level. This is simple yes. currencies in here. And then I've done this one, which is the Sovereign Manual now. Oh, wow. So we've got this one, okay? So the Sovereign, Man uh, Sovereign Project Handbook, which you can get on the website. Now in here is a deeper level, and it will show you how to do um, return mail, um, how to do notices, how to do warrants, all that sort of stuff. And it's copyright free. So you can scan this and share it on in, on your social media. I don't care. You know, so your, are both books on your website or are they online elsewhere? Yeah, um, I couldn't get this one. <laughs> couldn't get this one published. So I managed to get Amazon to do it. So it's self-published. Self-published, right, OK. Uh, I have to apologise. If you do buy a copy of this, I apologise for the typing errors and spelling mistakes. I couldn't afford to get it proofread. And the brain does tricks on you. Yes. Oh, really I know. I've, own book. It, I, I've it, written some children's books uh, in the past and I've self-published them. Um, I enjoyed the process, but the publishing side of it and the proofreading and all of that was just um, a, a nightmare. Hence, I use my mouth a lot more than I do writing stuff <laughs> um so yes yeah, so the so I must get a copy of that uh, sovereign project book for sure because I think that's uh, going to be very useful I'll, you'll go and purchase a copy on your website you and just re just remind us where the what the website is for the I'll put it in the link but people oh, get yes. very you know oh, they, they'll get on so that's uh, the sovereign project dot live and all contact information is on there and the links to the books and there's a whole load of documents on there for free. You can download them, learn about stuff in your own time, read them, sh photocopy them, share them, put your own name on them. I don't care. 
Mm. Okay, there's too many people in the truth movement are too precious over their work. Going, oh, it's my work, it's my work. I don't care. If you at want this, to, yeah, at this I stage, mean, it's about getting the mass movement, isn't it? A great rising of people to 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 challenge the system because at the end of the day, it's the benefit of everybody if we turn the system round. Yes, you know, let's end the third world. You know, let's end all this poverty, all this misery that's coming. Let's let's end the bloody paedophile things. I mean, come yes. on. If people yes. are arguing over, oh, that's my work. I I've got no time for people like that. I I get angry. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's not. Let's not. I don't want to end up having to wallop you. Again. Yes, I know. <laughs> I, I, I want to keep my microphone. <laughs> oh dear. Thank you so much um, for a, another session. It, it would be great. Maybe I'm going to be taking a bit of a break. I haven't actually told sure. the uh, viewers this from the interviews because the sun is shining and I want to get out in a van and go and visit people and see people and interview people in their location and what have you rather oh, than over cool. Zoom because I just want to... You know, having a real connection with people is um, is very important. So I may be taking a break, but, it'd be, it, but I'd love to come and meet you at some function, at some, yes. at some juncture rather, and... Um, and then maybe do a, a, a little video that way uh, in due course. I'm not quite sure where you're where you're based, but yeah, um, we'll Leicester. work Leicester. Oh, it's very nice up there. Yeah, there's so, some nice uh, countryside actually, some nice um, roads out there. Yeah, so oh, brilliant. We're to go go and have a cup of tea in the van somewhere with a lovely landscape behind us and, <laughs> and talk uh, talk some more. It would be great. Yeah. Thank anytime. you. Thank you so much, Pete. Really appreciate it. As I say, back by popular demand. Uh, so do check out the website. Go and buy the books. Uh, excuse the spelling. I know exactly yes. what that's like. Sorry. Um, <laughs> and I hope we've answered some of the questions and we've gone into it a little bit more. And it's enticed people. Don't worry about the register button on the website. Read, enrol, and yes. uh, and and you'll you'll get uh, you'll get further in. Then it won't put you off. Um, <laughs> Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Uh, it's great fun, um, and yeah, treat it as a game. That's uh, that's the that's the thing I've taken away from this. Until next time, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for watching. I will be back with more bits and bobs, of course. But until next time, from Sovereign Pete and myself, goodbye.